Shalom Aleichem, everybody, and thank you so much for this beautiful invitation. I think it's been, uh, I think it was last year, last year we did this, um, and, and Chazda Hashem, we're starting again, we're starting again this year, Hitchachas, as we know, by Chabad, this is Rosh Hashanah for Hasidus, Balatanya was freed from prison, and as well, sometimes that gets forget, forgotten. It's the yod site of the Maggid of Mezrij. So Baruch Hashem, we've spoken about, the other speakers have spoken about this Nakuda of the Balatanya and the amount of days that he spent in the prison. It's connected to the Prokim of the first part of Tanya, which maybe we'll go into. And as well, hopefully, maybe we'll be able to connect this uh, special day, the 19th of Kislev, to Hanukkah that... Uh, 19th of Kislev, Kislev, according to some of the Hasidic Sfarim, it's a preparation for Hanukkah, but it's Hashem. So we'll see where we'll get to. If I can first ask you, just take a breath, just stop, just take a breath. Just be present, be present, we're here, Chazdei Hashem. Absolutely amazing. So I'd like to share with you something that um, I, I spoke a little about a number of hours ago in Yerushalayim. And, and I was going to potentially speak about something else, but I, I would like to open what we spoke about up a little bit. So we started off with a, a posuk or parrot from Yechezkel, Yechezkel Lamed Zayn. Famously, Yechezkel comes and tells us about the, 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 the field of dry bones, and the two parts to the Geula process, the first part to the Geula process is where these dry bones start to come together in the shape of a human being or human beings. And the skeletal system of the scattered bones creates a shape of, of a human being. And then the ligaments and the tendons and the flesh, the muscles and the skin, till you have this human being, this complete human being physically in front of us. Then from there, there's a second part of the messianic process. The second part of the messianic process, as the words within the Tanakh tell us, there's a ruach that starts to envelop this skeletal system, this body that's just dormant laying there. And there's two parts to the second part of this process that we'll go into. But there's this ruach, this this the spirit that envelops this body, and the body now has life. The body has life. So we can translate into our terms, the first part of the Gula process is the physical part of the Gula, the physical manifestation of the Gula. And what is that, my beautiful friends? <laughs> I'm sitting here in the wee hours of the morning in Ramat Bet Shemesh, in Eretz Yisrael, I'm sitting in a home, and there's chashmal, internet, there's there's lights, it's 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 there's flooring, beautiful tiles, paint, and there's pictures on the wall, and and as, if I go outside, there's there's streets, there's street lamps, it's, it's unbelievable. The first part of our geula is the building, the physiological building of the land and people moving in, people moving to Eretz Yisrael. Hevra, we live in the most unbelievable generation. First part of the geula. But then there's a second part of the geula, which has two stages. The second part of the geula, part A, is what we're doing now. It's the spread of what we label Pnimius Hatayra. Pneumia Satira is, is opening up a dialogue of a deeper nature, opening up a dialogue that, that goes deeper because we're in a generation on a certain respect. We really can't stand for superficialness and we shouldn't. The question is, where do we go? So the first shlav of the second part of Geula is the building of this ruach, is, is having a conversation of a deeper nature. In the Heilige Sefer Mei Marom, Ori Viyishi, and actually today where I was this morning, where I was by Breslov, opposite is where Rabbi Yaakov Moshe Chalap would daven. It's an Ori Viyishi Lamed Hei Chevra. It tells us how 
that in the times from Rav Kook and Rav Yaakov Meisha onwards, that we'll be able to speak a language of Pinimis HaTorah in a clearer fashion. That really it goes a little bit deeper, that we have the ability to share ideas from the internal dimension of Torah that we couldn't share before. And more than that, even if we could share it before, we have so much more expression of these deeper ideas through even Kapshutai technological development. There's in, in Meimarom, it's just come to mind now, in Meimarom, we mentioned this actually as well. I think I mentioned this yesterday. Uh, um, I mentioned this. That in Meimarom in Mishle, I did mention this. In Meimarom in Mishle, the beginning of Mishle, Rabbi Yaakov Moshe speaks about the Indian of Nimshol and Moshol, Moshol and Nimshol. And we today have so many items. We live in a world where we have an interesting development from a technological perspective that we could use them as mashalim to understand nimshal. So for example, you know, the internet and the yichud, shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad, just once upon a time, echad, yichud, how? But you look today, people could be in touch with each other from all over the world in but moments. So Ari Vishi, the Meimaram there, he, he says to us that we'll be able to use words to describe deep ideas more than ever before. And Rav Kook in Ayrais, first parak, Ayrais HaKadosh, first parak, speaks about how we change and the wisdom that we are learning changes and we can be moved by wisdom which again is happening. The people, they're learning these svarim. They're learning these svarim. They're being moved by these svarim. It's interesting to note, Vayikra Rabba Yud Gimel. I remember it, Yud Gimel, because of Echad and Ahava. But there's a Torah Hadasha based on Yeshaya, Nun Aleph, Perek, or Posuk Dalad. The Rav Avin tells us there's a new Torah, Torah Hadasha. This is something very important to think about. So the first shlav of Geula, my dear friends, it's, it's, it's happening in front of our eyes. We are witnesses to it. Chevra, we are witnesses to it. We should be very proud. I'd like to add here that, you know, today so many people don't necessarily see the Chiddush of Yiddishkeit. And, and one reason why people struggle and they don't see necessarily the Chiddush of Yiddishkeit how many conversations I have. Oh, you know, in the self-help world, the, 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 the information there is, it's machazek me more. Or, or for example, um, unfortunately, other systems, Buddhism, whatever it may be, inspires me more. What's Pasha? Why don't we so see so clearly the Chiddush of Yiddishkeit? Well, let me share with you what one of my teachers said. Rabbi Singer said that the Chiddush of Yiddishkeit is lessened on a certain respect today because we've accomplished our goal. If we go back to Kabbalah Satira, what was happening before Kabbalah Satira to what's happened after Kabbalah Satira is radically different. It's revolutionary. The before Kabbalah Satira, people would shecht anything and everything left, right, and center. Paganism. They would do so many different forms of service which were savage. After Chait Ada, after... Kabbalah Satara, that was very different. Most of the world today functions around the values of the Ten Commandments. Law, in a certain respect, so many elements of law are based on, on the values of the Ten Commandments and, and other inherent laws within Yiddishkeit. And today we look around and it's, you know, it's like so, so strange because we're... <sighs> The Nukud is Hevra, we've achieved our goal on a certain respect. The first love of Gaula, we've achieved. We can pat each other on the back. Yes, we Hashem, we're living in a world which, so to speak, has values and is a more moral world than so to speak, so to speak, yes, we have our problems, but but ever before. It's it's an amazing reality. We've accomplished on a certain respect the first love of what we wanted to accomplish. Now we have our second Afaidah. In Yirmiyahu, in the fifth parak, again, Posak Yud Aleph, we are told how when we went into exile, we lost our das. The second part of Geula contains 
A and B. A is that we're learning Pinimis Hatayra. But the second chilek of the Pinimis Hatayra, the second chilek is the embodiment of what we learn, that we know how we work. If I can call it an embodied spirituality, the guf, the gufoi, the embodied spirituality. What does that mean? That means that we all live extraordinary, ordinary lives, but we're drawing from a very high place. We're living, we're living physiologically in a very real way. We're living in this world in a very, very real way. And Tachlis, we see the last part of our gula is very much about the physical. Chabad Chagat Nehim. If you look at the 6,000 years of our history, we're in the last leg of our 6,000 years. So we first had to fix up the Chabad then the Chagat, now the Nehim, Netzachad Yusayid, and coming into the Malchus. So yes, we have to bring down Ruchnius all the way down into the physicality, embodied spirituality. In Torah Chabad, we're told about how Tachlis, the Kli, the, the Gashmius, the source of the Gashmius, comes from a higher place than Ruchnius. The way Rabbi Singer would describe it, the correction of Rebbe would describe it, Kiviochel, so to speak. Again, we're just speaking in analogies, but he would give a dugma, so to speak, so to speak, Kiviochel. But what? Ah, in Ruchnius, it's easy to make more Ruchnius. If, you know, Kaddish Baruch was Ruchnius and the Melachim are Ruchnius, it's easy to make Ruchnius. But Gashmius, completely different. So to speak, Kiviochel, it's harder to make Gashmius. We're just using a language to express an idea here. But it's not really what's going on, but we can just use, because Torah was given in the Loshan of Adam, so we're leveraging that. The Nakuda is, it's more difficult, Yeshmi Ayn, it's more difficult, so to speak, for Ruchnius to make Gashmius than Ruchnius to make Ruchnius. So the Kli, the Makor, the Pnimi of Gashmius comes from a higher place than Ruchnius. And our Avaid is to bring Torah's HaRuchnius all the way down into the Gashmius, embodied spirituality. That we want to bring the R all the way down. And this is one reason, for example, why we have so much abundance in our world today. There's, there's so much riches. We're wealthy. We're rich. We have so much today. One reason is because <laughs> we are being requested by the cause of all causes to interface with Gashmius. And through interfacing with Gashmius, with a proper mindset, with Ruchnius, we are going down to go up. We're picking up, we're releasing, relinquishing, and elevating all of these. So the question is, how does that occur? So if we think about it, if we think about it, when we speak about embodied spirituality, when we speak about the second chilek, of the second part of the Geula process, this Ruach, it's taking what we learn and living it. It's understanding the architecture of the soul, how we work, how we function, and having the gifted opportunity to upgrade our consciousness. And we're going to speak about two Nakudas here. Let, let's speak about two Nakudas. One Nakuda is the Nakuda of Das. The second Nakuda is the Nakuda of, of uh, so to speak, the difficult days, the darker days. We'll, we'll see where we get to and link that Beis Ras Hashem to, to, to Hanukkah as well. So, so let's start. If we think about it, really everybody has physiologically the same stuff. Us here online, we have nose, eyes, we have hands, legs, we have our bodies, and we have our you know, physicality around us. Some of you, I could see, are still outside, but most people are inside. We have a room, you know, we're sitting on chairs. We, we've got pretty much the same stuff around us. We've got the seasons, winter, summer. We've got autumn and spring. We, we, we have the same seasons. Physiologically, we have pretty much the same stuff. Where things become different is in our thinking. Where things become very, very different is in our minds. And one of my ancestors, he wrote a commentary on the Sefer HaYitzira. And in the Sefer HaYitzira, this commentary is called Pre Yitzchak. So he takes one of the Mishnayas, it says how oneg, pleasure, 
are the same letters as nega. Oneg and nega. Oneg, pleasure, nega. Uh, discomfort, hell. <laughs> Not good. Oneg and nega, the same letters. But then as well, he brings karet and keter. Oneg and nega, the same letters. Keter, crown and karet, disconnection. Same with kesher and, ke and, and sheker. Same with hod and dava. What's interesting, it's the same letters. Rearrange the same letters, you get polar opposites in ideas. And he brings a whole list of words. What's he coming to share? He comes and says that we all have thought. All of us have thought. And the question is, how conscious are we in leveraging our thought? Are we using our thought, which is a gift? Thought is much older than all of us. Our parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. The human species has access to thought. Question is, what are we doing with our thinking? How are we leveraging our thinking? Because pretty much what we have in this world and what we manifest in this world comes through and from our thinking. And the ability to observe our thinking, the ability to make a shift is, is, is being deeper. It's being of ruach. The first love, it's learning that material that deepens our inquiry. It's realizing that all of us have thought. The reason why I bring this up as well is because by the Maggot of Mesrich, one of the big Nakudas by the Maggot of Mesrich in his several different Svarim, where his teachings are brought, is this Nakuda of Taras Ha Machshava. Purification of our thinking. Why? Because our thinking is ever so powerful, my friends. What we think comes around. And a step above that is being conscious, what we call das, self-awareness. An awareness of what's going on outside around us. So the way we could start to get into a state of das, and again, this is a second shlav of the second part of the Gula process. This is where we are up to in our day and age. We can etch in, we can go into this. And you'll see more and more people will be speaking about this. You'll hear this left, right, and center. To get into a state of das is just to become self-aware. You can ask yourself, what am I thinking right now? Ma ni choshev. This was a teaching that I heard from another teacher, Rabbi Yitzchak Isaac Shapira, who is a Talmud Muvak, who was a Talmud Muvak of the Piyasetzna Rebbe, and he learned this from the Piyasetzna. Ma ani choshev, what am I thinking? And if we become aware, we can pick up on the fact that I could be aware of sound and imagery. Ma ani choshev. We can ask ma ani margish, what emotions am I experiencing? I can become aware of that. Ma ani margish begufani, what am I feeling in my body right now? Do it. Do it right now. Ask yourself, what am I feeling physiologically right now in the present moment? How is my body feeling? That's right. Ask yourself, what emotions am I feeling right now? And you can ask yourself, what thoughts am I experiencing right now? Because my friends, really, if we think deeply about this, we can come to understand that we have the ability to develop, build, create, cultivate a relationship with our thinking. And our thinking is so important. And we could be aware of it. And being in a state of das, we then could be aware of our machshavas. We could be aware. We could, you know, turn the nega into oineg. We can turn the karet into keter. We can turn the sheker chas v'shalom into kesher. We can turn the dava into hod. We have that ability. I could choose to ignore or explore a thought. Our minds can be a place of hell or our minds can be a place of heaven. Our minds can be a place of Gehenim. Chazav Shalom. A person's mind can be a place of Gehenim. Our minds, you and I, our minds could be a place of Gam Eden. Our minds could be a place of Mamash Oineg. Keter, Kesher, Hod. We are always relating to our internal environment, our inner environment, we're not relating to our outer environment. I'm never relating to that which is 
I'm never relating really to that which is in front of me. I'm relating to my interpretation of that which is in front of me. I'm always relating to my assumptions and expectations. I'm relating to my thinking in the present moment. And this Nakuda is something very important to think about. Because pretty much we are not so different. We're very similar. Our thinking is what makes us different. And we can choose being in a state of das. I can choose to interface with my thinking. I can choose to leverage my thinking. If a thought comes up, I can say, ah, I like that thought. I'll run with it. I don't like that thought. I'm going to move on to something else. It takes practice. If this is the first time you're ever hearing about this, most of you have heard about this before. But if this is the first time you're hearing about this, experientially, this is the second shlav of the second part of the messianic process. And we are in it. We are here. We can allow this ruach to envelop us. We can allow this consciousness to envelop us. That I could be self-aware and I can choose to leverage the direction of my thinking. I could move the nega to oinig. I can move the karet to keter. I can move the sheker to kesher. I can move the dava to hod. I have that ability. I've been gifted that. Think about it. I'll add another dimension as well, based on the second kuda. And that is leaning in to the discomfort of what's happening. We experience discomfort. We could lean into it. We spoke about this at the, the Siam a few weeks ago, that so many people, they want to feel their reward at the end. You do something, ah, I get a reward. And they will do more and more do more and more things to get a good reward. But what happens is you have to constantly intensify the reward in order to motivate yourself to get to where you need to get to. As you know, we've spoken about this many a time. It's learning to experience the discomfort. It's being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And if we could lean into what we're doing and get our dopamine release, if we can get our dopamine release, our this reward chemical, not at the end, but during, I lean into it, changes everything. Why I say that, uh, you know, why I say that is as following. Just to just to add in here, for some of you, you know, for example, the avoider of cold showers, <laughs> the avoider of going into an ice bath. That you go in and, yes, okay, I've got this. You lean into the discomfort. It does wonders to you. It changes your neurobiology, changes the chemistry in your body. And this is something incredibly important as well, that what happens is, for example, in the days that are good, they're called or, a meichin de godless. But then sometimes what happens, that or is removed, siluk ha it's removed. So is it removed that it's gone? So I want to share with you a Torah, a more pinimistic a Torah from, from Rabbi Singer. He would quote the Arizal, the Rashash, and the Torah's Chacham. And, and we spoke about this Pesach time several times, how within those writings, we speak about how from Pesach we have Meichin de Gadlus, and then there's a Siluk HaMeichin. When we go into the world of Svira Sa'aymer. And when we go into the world of Svira Sa'aymer, there's a darkness. Siluk HaMeichin. So the, the, the Heilige Pils and Arav, Rabbi Singh would say as following, it's not that that Meichin the Godless has been moved, re removed, it's gone. No. He would explain it as following. And it's a very deep idea. Think about it. Reflect upon it. That when we have mamish, a meichin de gadlis, we feel geshmak, we feel great. So we now are going to birth a new madrega. We're going to go into a new madrega. So he would say on a very superficial level that that dark, that light, that meichin de gadlis becomes now a vessel. Something happens where it now becomes a vessel for the next level of growth. So that light is only experienced as light because there's a vessel to hold it. So now we're going to move into something greater. So that light, so to speak, solidifies and becomes the vessel which appears dark because now there's a halal to receive a new light of the next level above. So when a person experiences difficulty, lean into it with the knowledge 
I'm now in a state of das and I can choose to do my best to turn, as we said. The nega into oineg. The karet into keter. The sheker into kesher. The dava into hoid. I have that ability to take that darkness and lean into it, recognizing that this now is a vehicle, this is a clea in order to come up to something greater. It's a void. So my meichin, the godless, becomes the kli. And that kli is called the chin of siluk ha meichin. becomes a vessel. The vessel is hard, darker, so to speak, not light. And now I've created this vessel. I lean into the discomfort. I'm aware. I'm conscious. Okay, I'm now creating a new level. This is where I'm finding or the places of discomfort, as we've discussed before. We can daven for ourselves. We can daven for the loved ones around us. Rabbi Nachman speaks about this idea as well. in Kutei Maran Cafe. The before growth, there's usually a darkness. But that darkness within itself is a clea for that light. How we could find the or and we should find the or in the lowest of places. I'm not going to go into it now. Remember the Indian of Matat and Moshe. Where Moshe cried when Batsheva came to get him. So it could have the highest or being found in the lowest of places. And then taking that new yichud and elevating it. And that's why, for example, in our door we find... We find there is so much abundance, so much physicality, because we're in a matzav, my friends, where we can bring the highest lights. When we are more in a state of das, I'm conscious, I'm aware, I'm self-aware. I can be aware of my physical sensations, my feelings, my thoughts. I can do that check-in. And I can have the ability to guide my thinking. I can choose to ignore or explore. I can purify my mind, taras hamachshava. And, and when something comes up in front of me, I could lean into it. I can understand that this discomfort is but an or, is but a kli for the new light that's about to come in. Bechin of halal. There's a new light, there's a halal to receive this new light. But I can share, we can share here, my friends, that this is an akuda of the Balatanya in prison that we know by the Balatanya that he was in prison the same amount of parakim in the beginning of Tanya, 52, 53 parakim. And every single day, they say because the Torah that the Balatanya was given over was very high. And there's different shitat in actually what the issue was, but one nakuda is that it was very high and it didn't have the proper clean and it didn't necessarily fall cleanly and seamlessly into a carry-on from the Balshemtev and the Arizal, whatever it may be. So there's a kitrug. But the nakuda is is that every perek is or and it needed a kli. The kli was the day spent in prison. And we know that the Heilige Balatanya leaned into the situation. He didn't become sad, ba'atzvus. He leaned into it. How do we know that? Because we know that the Heilige Baal Shem Tev and the Magad of Mezrish came to visit him. So he had a begin of Ruch HaKadosh. We know from Esther that Esther, when she went into the king, she had Ruch HaKadosh. Gemara and Shabbos tells us you can only have Ruch HaKadosh when you're Sameach. So we know that Esther leaned into the discomfort. Balatanya leaned into this comfort. He owned it. He leaned into the darkness, the creation of this vessel, the darkness. In the lowest places, he leaned into it because that's a place where Rabbeinu Shalaylam could be Magale. And each day was a, each day of discomfort that he leaned into was a tikkun for the Perek. And then thereafter, we know famously, the, the Balatanya asks, well, should I stop teaching Hasidus? And the Balat Shem Tov and the Balatani says, no, teach more Hasidus. Now that you've gone through this and you've purged and purified, you've created a Kli. <laughs> more, more Hasidus. Something so profound, it's so deep. I just want to start to wind down and, and 
just to, to share as following that these two shlavim of the second part of the Geula, first shlav physiologically, the second part A, where we have the words, we have the malchus, the svarim, the mashbiim teaching. Ay, it's a p'chin of Purim, a malchus. P'chin of Purim, there's words, there's a megillah. There's a megillah. And, and the, this shlav is a very important shlav. It's about communication, about language. All the way through Purim, Megillah's Esther, it's about language and about the how Mordechai, he knew 70 languages and he understood the two people plotting against the king because he spoke their unique dialect. About language. Not going into it now, but the, the, just to know that. What is Hanukkah? Hanukkah is the second shlav, the ruach, this internal spirit. It's the ner. It's my personal experience. It's having the ability to have a, a, a deeper understanding of the architecture of the soul. It's having the ability to lean into the discomfort. I like the menorah by the Pesach. Petach is gematria chasidus. And I like the menorah close to the ground. I bring the light all the way down. It's leaning into the beauty. Not running away. It's leaning into the wealth, not running away. We know by Purim, Moshe ben David, Purim is Bechin of Moshe ben David, not going into it now, but it's what the Svarim bring. And Hanukkah is Bechin of Moshe ben Yosef. Yosef is Bechin of the Guf. He was very good looking, he had his curls, he dealt with wealth. And the Nakuda is in our door, our Avaida in our door is to free ourselves from the prison. Don't become a slave to the world outside. Don't become a slave. Be the balabais, baldas, balastas. Own it. Be conscious. I could be aware of what's going on inside of me. I could be aware of what's going on around me. And I can choose to ignore or explore. I can choose to turn the nega into aineg. I have that ability. I have das. I have bechira. I could choose his slavas and mamas jump into it. I could choose to turn the karat, the separation, into keter, which is connection. It's revelation. I can choose that. I can choose to find the or in the choshech. I can choose to own it. The Indian, as we said of matat and Moshe, I can choose to turn the sheker into kesher. Honesty, authenticity, vulnerability. I can choose to turn the dava into hoid. I can choose to ignore or explore. And I can choose to recognize that in the times of darkness, it's the recognition that I'm creating or a kli is being created. The solidification, so to speak, of that or is what? It's a kli for the next gift of light. And my friends, Beis Hashem, We'll take this day, there's a, there's a Messiah, there's a Messiah I heard from one of the old Chabadniks, that this day, Mamash is Rosh Hashanah, it's a Yom Kippur, Shuvah, Tefillah, Rosh Hashanah for Hasidus. We, we're doing, the, I think it was the Rebbe Rashab, we're doing HaKadosh Baruch Hu Ataiva because we want a Dira Tachtayna. As we know from the Medrash Tanchuma, we want a Dira Tachtayna. Well, that's what Hashem wants, a Dira Tachtayna. So we have to build it, Chevra. We are it. We're living in the most spectacular, superb generation. Each and every one of us handpicked to be here. Hevra, you and I, every movement is the most stunning, spectacular motion of light being birthed into the world. Because there was never a you as you are in this incarnation. There was never a you. Before you came into the world, there was never a you. And after you graduate, after we graduate from this world, there'll never be another you. So every single movement, even my movement of the hand right now, this is a unique sprinkle flavor, a unique gift of light. And the more I'm in a state of das, and the more that I understand how I work, I can build a relationship with my thinking, and I can build out through my thinking, I can do this. Baruch Hashem, to love, support, care, share, and encourage one another. We can build. We can lead our life in the most spectacular way. And to recognize that any darkness that we experience, lean into it 
with the consciousness, the recognition, bring the light down into the darkness, recognizing that we have a meichin de godless. And what siluka meichin is, it's the building of a kli, it's that light becoming, so to speak, I, I think about a, 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 a volcano and the lava becomes hard. You could then walk on it. It becomes a kli for something new. And to recognize each and every one of us are living in spectacular, amazing, beautiful, fantastic times. Allow ourselves to be freed from our internal prisons, to be free. And to Magala HaKadosh Baruch Hu, to Magala HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Balatanya did the work for us. A massive percent of the work for us. Magad of Mesrich, so much all. We want to take it and we want to build off it. And Beis Ras Hashem, we should go mamish from strength to strength. L'chaim, toivim, shalom. You're beautiful. You're wonderful. You're fantastic. Kol tevorah havatz lachem. Thank you. Thank you.